Rise upon third reading and final passage of Senate Bill 495B. Representative Barnhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill eliminates a property tax exemption for an out of, for out of state city or out of state public entities of any intangible or tangible property, property rights, or property interests in or related to the Pacific Northwest AC intertie, as referenced in written agreements between the U.S. Energy Department and the city or the public entity. It applies to tax years beginning on or after July 1, 2009, takes effect on the 91st day after adjournment. Colleagues, this bill is a, a bill that restores the usual uh, property tax rule uh, in uh, the state of Oregon. Uh, the normal rule in, uh, in the United States is that local jurisdictions, uh, uh, local government jurisdictions, local public entities, are exempt from a variety of different taxes in the state in which they do their, in which they are organized and do most of their work. But they are not exempt in other states. And uh, there are um, multitudinous examples of situations in which uh, organizations very much like these are regularly, uh, organized in Oregon, are regularly taxed in Washington, Idaho, California, and uh, other states. Uh, this simply restores the normal rule by removing the exemption. The exemption came about as a result of uh, action of the legislature in 2005. The Department of Revenue had earlier uh, sent deficiency notices for failure to file a property tax return uh, to the, the uh, Washington entities. Uh, they had failed to file property tax returns for a period of five years. The matter went, uh, was appealed and was in the tax court uh, at the time that the legislature acted and therefore was dismissed. The entities were forgiven over $5 million in property taxes. This measure uh, would allow, uh, would re restore the uh, property tax requirement. Uh, it raises approximately $1.2 million a biennium, half of which goes to the schools. Uh, and of course, because of the way our funding formula works, it would benefit every school in the state. Colleagues, I urge an I vote on this important restoration of our property tax law. Thank you. And I will remain a no today. And I would ask this afternoon that you just slow down and look at this bill with a little bit of caution. Uh, it's easy to get sort of caught up in the, the flow of, oh, it's a revenue bill, it's sort of complex, it's sort of technical vote the yes button, I would encourage you to consider, consider this bill a little, 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 little deeper. Um, as the uh, Good Revenue Chair said, this is a, uh, this is a result of a, of a law that we passed in 2005. Um, the reason that we passed, among the reasons that we passed that law was to prohibit getting caught in a U.S. Commerce Clause potential lawsuit. That's what we were avoiding. By repealing this, if you will, and going back to the, the original status quo, we, we need to be cautious because it once again opens, up, opens us up to Commerce Clause issues and lawsuits. Um, I, without reading too much into it, I think there's a pretty good probability that these entities, either individually or combined, will sue that, will pursue that on a, uh, on a Commerce Clause basis. Uh, even beside that, even if that's not the course of events, what we also potentially do is open ourselves up to retaliatory taxing initiatives from the state of Washington. Um, this has worked so far from a policy perspective. What we're really doing here is trying to grab a few more dollars. I understand that, but it, I, I think the few more dollars that we're potentially grabbing aren't enough to justify the legal headaches and hurdles that we will be encumbering upon ourselves and may end up in the long run costing us money. So colleagues, I will vote no and I would urge you to vote cautiously. Thank you. Further discussion, Representative Riley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the bill. To the bill. Colleagues, um, I just wanted to let you know that I uh, did some research. I had some, some folks ask um, the taxing agencies in, in Washington if um, Oregon uh, utilities had the same situation in Washington, um, and we had intertized going to Idaho or wherever through Washington, would our utilities be taxed under their current law? The answer is yes. Um, there, 
there's no retaliation that's going to happen. Uh, they would already tax us if this occurred, uh, and they know it. Um, I urge your yes vote. Further discussion, Representative Benz. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Uh, colleagues, I also did a considerable amount of research on this bill. I found some of the legal arguments uh, supporting a no vote to be innovative and interesting. Uh, although I'm not a constitutional scholar by any stretch, I do know some modest amount about the Commerce Clause. I don't think it applies here. Um, I will be a yes vote on this bill, and I would urge you to do the same. I am guessing that the state of Washington finds itself in similar economic difficulties, and if it could tax us, it would tax us. Um, I, I think this is the fair thing to do. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, Representative Barnhart, do you wish to close? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to address uh, two of the issues that were raised in the debate. First, the Commerce Clause issue. I, I want to let the body know that we've received uh, re uh, memoranda from uh, uh, Stoll Reeves and from Legislative Council, both of which uh, indicate their opinion that uh, the, uh, this statute would be upheld on a Commerce Clause uh, on Commerce Clause grounds. It, and it makes perfectly good sense that it would be, since other states uh, already ta uh, have similar taxes, as you've already heard. Uh, the other issue that has been raised is on retaliatory taxes. Uh, it has been raised in, in conversation uh, and in the committee that uh, Washington could change its sales tax to tax Oregonians. Uh, in the event that this were to pass, uh, I would submit that uh, the reason that Washington uh, mer merchants do not tax uh, Oregon residents on their sales taxes because they want Oregon residents to come and buy in Washington. That is not going to happen. Uh, the other uh, proposal that has been made is that they will change their property tax uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, make certain that they tax intangibles in Washington, which they currently do not do. Uh, if you know anything about property taxes, you know that that would be an extremely difficult and expensive process, that also is not going to happen. Again, I urge and I vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those of the opinion the bill should pass will vote aye. Those opposed, no. The clerk will open the voting system. <laughs> Representative Chris Edwards, how do you vote? Edward votes aye. Representative Schopfler votes no. Senate Bill 495B, having received the constitutional majority, is declared passed.